once you remove the boot and you can see on here there is a a bevel into this landing on here it's got a groove set in it and there's a corresponding groove on the inside of the boot here it's very very important especially if you've had a boot that's been leaking a little bit and you get a lot of corrosion that you clean that corrosion off there's no easy way it's just a matter of getting a little piece of sandpaper and digging in there but get it clean otherwise you won't get a good seal right guys so we've cleaned up the the boss that the boot goes on and i've just slid this one on just a couple of things to bear in mind um, if i try and come in here on the boot it does have up written on the top there Dave can zoom in on that and that, as the name suggests, means that boot needs to be orientated in the up position. It's to do with the, the fold of the bellows to allow them to flex best. And what I tend to do is I just put a little mark on the boot so it is quite awkward to see when it's on. Put a little mark on there. When you click it on, you can twist that to get it at the top. Then it's just a matter of tightening up that rearmost clamp, making sure that the boot is, is in that groove when you put it on you'll feel it click as it goes over and the little pimple clips into the um, into the groove make sure it's on give it a couple of turns and then it's just a matter of tightening up that boot at the back okay so we've got the boot attached on the back there just a little um, word is Volvo do a, a, a glue called a bellows adhesive that some people do use on the bellows which is like a contact sealer adhesive. Uh, I suppose the official way is to use it. Um, I do on some if they're badly corroded, I'll tend to put the adhesive on. If they're clean like this one was, I've never had a problem with them leaking. I'm just telling you the ways I do it, you make your decision. The, it is called bellows adhesive, should you wish to. Okay, so we need to prepare this unit for it going back on. The first thing I'll show you is the spline collar. The spline collar links that shaft there with the corresponding shaft which is in the leg and this is just free floating so when we was taking it off what we did was we made sure that was pushed down onto the lower half. We're going to do that again so let's make sure it's clean. Locate him on the shaft and he'll drop down. The next thing we must do is make sure that all of this area in here is immaculate. Um, again, I've, I've already had a clean up of this one, but we'll go around it again with our cloth. Make sure there's no corrosion, no dirt, nothing. It, it's very important. The next thing I like to put in place are the two shims, or three or four or one, depending on what you've got. These are here. So the first thing I like to do is really, really give these a good rub up, just to make sure we've got rid of any dirt or grease. What these provide is the preload onto this bearing when the housing's clamped down. So we'll pop that one in. tip here is those those shims are not very good at staying in their place what I use is this is a proprietary stuff especially for this um, which is basically a, a kind of thick grease which will collapse is I like to hold them in place a normal splodge of lithium grease will do it if you just put a couple of small amounts of that on what it'll do is it'll just hold those shims while we're wiggling around and make sure that they don't pop out and get in the way. Just a small amount just to hold them. The second thing we must do is make sure the mating surface here is clean. Now what you've got is you've got a large o-ring which seals the gearbox, the oil side, and you've also got an o-ring here which so this o-ring is, is squashed flat on both sides, it's not meant to be that shape but what's happened is over time it's become crushed. 
and that's the reason we don't use our old o-rings and we always replace them with new so they're no good I, have, I buy these, I keep these on stock, you can buy a small pack of these um, which have both in um, and these are what you're going to need. The other thing that's sealed on here and you can see here a little bit of it is we use a, a non-hardening sealant there, not silicon. Um, we don't use silicon sealer on it. Um, I use a, a product um, called Well Seal but any non-drying sealant will do. So I'll get on and clean this up. And it is important whilst you're cleaning up that you stop any of the dirt getting back into that gearbox. Okay, so once you've got this surface cleaned up and this one here, what we can do is we can pop our new O-rings in. Take them out here. And again, I'm going to use some of my special stuff, but a little bit of grease is just as good. Just to hold that O-ring in its position. Which I'm going to put onto here. Okay. And the smaller o-ring we can just slide over there, make sure it's clean. So, what we do here is we put a non-handing sealer we mentioned. The one I use is well sealed, there's many many different ones on the market. But basically you want a jointing compound that doesn't harden. Literally all we're doing is just assisting a little bit, so we're just going to put a small spear around those jointing surfaces. Don't put tons on, it'll just splurge out everywhere. Literally a small amount of coverage there. The mating surfaces, you know I've known people put these together not put anything on there and not have problems, but this is the way it should be done. Okay. And it literally, that's all it needs. The next bit is the fun bit, which is getting this to line this spline here. Lift it up. Drive spline here with the shaft on the transom plate there. And there is no easy way, it's a matter of getting your hand in there best you can and juggling it in. At this stage, try to remember to put your clip on. If you do forget, I mean, you can part it and put it on later. But just taking a little note of the orientation of it as well. Now, what I do here is I will put over that hole a rag. Because what I don't want is when I'm knocking things, is any dirt to go in there. I'm just going to lay it over. Okay, so what we can do with this, check everything's clean and it's well orientated. We've got our drive cup in there. And what we have to do now is literally lift her on and in. And juggle until we get it land on the shaft. really is no easy way however what I will say at this point is it is infinitely easier to do it that way than when you've got this entire leg propped top heavy on a piece of wood and you're trying to wiggle it in I've got that started now so that will go in the next thing I'm going to do is make sure that during this stage when we take this cloth out and we rotate and drop this on we don't drop any dirt into the gearbox for obvious reasons so the key with this is get yourself prepared, take the weight of the unit, remove your cloth carefully, make sure your sealant's still on there, your cloth hasn't taken any off. We're going to rotate to 90 degrees. One last check on our O-rings. And then we're going to 
try and line everything up. There we go. You'll feel it go when it goes. You might have to just rotate the shaft a bit. And what you're going to see is that's going to naturally fall down until there's no gap there. Do not force it at this point. Good tap around. As I say, use the gearbox. You can check there. If you just click it in gear, you can use the, the drive from there to pull it in. Once you're at this stage, really, it's a matter of reversing the process. We're going to put our two bolts in there, our two nuts on there, and tighten them up nice and equally. We're going to watch for this unit pulling down properly and not anything being forced, no large gaps. You'll know if it feels right. We can put our boot on here, again, making sure this surface is clean. Tighten up the clip, reverse our process with our helmet, and build it up. And the next thing I'm going to show you is a couple of easy cheats on how to fill the oil up.